السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وما سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له نشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خالف المشركين خالف المشركين alhamdulillah we praise allah the almighty today we thank him for giving us another day of worship to worship him yom al-jumu'ah and we bear witness that there's nothing worthy of worship besides allah and we bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is allah's messenger and his servant brothers and sisters we seek refuge with allah from the evil of ourselves and we bear witness that whomever Allah guides is guided aright. And yet, whomever Allah allows to be misled, no one, no one, no one can guide them right. We ask Allah's blessing upon His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, upon his companions and his family and the Muslims everywhere. Ameen. Brothers and sisters, I feel compelled to begin today's khutbah with what is called Hadith Qudsi. It is a reminder for me and a reminder for us. This is something that Allah said, though it's not in the Quran, it's the Hadith of the Prophet, Hadith Qudsi. And the Messenger of Allah والسلام, said that Allah said, Ya ibadi, kulukun illa man hadaytuhu fastahduni ahdikum. O oh my servants, all of you are misguided unless I guide you. Therefore, ask my guidance and I will guide you. This is Allah speaking. And I bear witness that I have no knowledge, I have no guidance. I have, me, myself, have no knowledge and no guidance except for what Allah has given to us. I also say what the angels said that's recorded in Quran, Subhanaka. لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم. Glory be to you, O Allah. We have no knowledge except for what you have given to us. This is what the angels say. So I want uh, to say in context before I speak anything, I speak as nothing. And if we're going to be guided today in this khutbah, in this juma, then I must depend upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say something that Allah has taught us or something that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa has given to us. I have nothing to say this, nothing here, nothing empty except what Allah and His Messenger have put there, inshallah. Imam, I wanted to share an experience with you and the rest of the believers here at this wonderful masjid. And something that I learned a few months ago in my last trip to England. I have been to England many times, many, many times. But I learned something on my last trip that I never knew before. I was invited by the Muslims, some Muslim youth, they had a conference there. Um, and before I spoke, we were sitting together with this Muslim youth leaders, and we were eating. And I noticed one of them were eating with their, their left hand. Now, it's very difficult being imam. It's very difficult. Because as an imam, as a father, as a principal of a school, as a school teacher, we have the responsibility that if somebody in our presence is doing something wrong, then for their sake and our sake, we have to correct them. Because if we allow it to go on, then they say it's okay. And this was the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Anything that was said or done in his presence that he didn't correct, it's accepted as sunnah. 
So therefore, if something was done in the presence of the Messenger of Allah that was wrong, he had to correct it. So I took this from the Messenger of Allah and I told the brother, I said, Kul fi yaminik. What the Prophet said, eat with your right hand. Now brothers and sisters, for some people this is trivial. Ah, uh, what's the difference? Right hand, left hand, what's the difference? The difference is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kul bi yaminik. Eat with your right hand. Now, I want to prove to you that this is nothing uh, trivial. And um, proves exactly that this wasn't trivial. This hadith, Rawayhu al Muslim in Muslim hadith, and Rajalin akala inda Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi shimali. In the presence of the Messenger of Allah, there was a man eating with his left hand. And the Prophet said, Kul fi yaminik. Eat with your right hand. Qala la astati'u. The man said, I can't. The Prophet said, Ma istata'ata. May you not be able to. Wa ma mana'ahu ila al kibra. And nothing prevented this man from eating with his right hand except for pride. Fa ma rafa'aha ila fihi. And from that moment on, that man was not able to raise his hand to his mouth. Whatever the Messenger of Allah give you, take it. That's what Allah says. وَمَنْ يُتِعَ الرَّسُولِ فَقَدْ أَعْتَعَ اللَّهِ Whoever obeys the Messenger has obeyed Allah. Why? Who is he? He's Rasulullah. He's who? Rasulullah. He's not some Rajulun, some man. He's Rasulullah. He's a messenger of Allah. Therefore, everything that he speaks, he speaks from Allah. So if he tells you to eat with your right hand, you eat with your right hand. There's no argument there. So I was in England, in Manchester. The brother eating with his left hand. I said, brother, eat with your right hand. Know what he told me? He said, Imam Suraj, you don't know this. But the Muslims in England have a difficult time eating with their right hand. I said, SubhanAllah, why? He said, because they teach you in England to eat with your left hand. They teach you in England to eat with your left hand. Now Muslims say, well, how come we have to eat with our right hand? But they don't ask the question, why should we eat with our left hand in England? So I learned that, I said, SubhanAllah. And now, Imam, I understand the words of the Prophet Khaliful Mushrikeen, be opposite the disbelievers. And by the way, um, brothers and sisters, um, I'm going to give you a very short khutbah. If some of you are concerned that I'm going to be long, I'm going to be real short. The Imam gave me the leeway. He says, Imam, you can stretch out a little bit. But I'm not going to stretch out because I'm your guest. And you look like you have to go. So I give short khutbah. Tomorrow at the program, we all come back. We give long. But today, short, inshallah. But you have to listen. Inshallah, I'll say a few words, and then we go. I was uh, in the city of Chicago, and I came back to New York Saturday morning, and I had my car parked in the, in the airport. And I drove my car about two, two hours going to a prison upstate to visit some Muslims. And as I was driving my car on the major Deegan Highway, 
I notice a huge poster, one of my favorite people, Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali was in one of those, those stances, those box, you know, those stances. And I could read the caption under the picture of, the, of Muhammad Ali, and I read these words. It says, think different. Think different. So the first thing I did, I corrected the, the grammar. Think is a verb. And so if you are going to modify a verb, then you must modify it with an adjective or a, a verb, an adverb. So you have to say, think differently. So I changed it slightly to read, think differently. And I said, subhanAllah, that's it. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you today in this city, in this masjid, Masjid Ansar, that if you're going to be successful as a Muslim, as a believer, you must think differently from everybody else. Your mind must be guided by the light of the Quran and the direction and the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you have to think differently. Now, I'm looking at some of you dressed and I see all kinds of colors but two colors I want to mention today. Abyad, white, or aswad, black. There is no greater contrast of any color other than black and white. This is the greatest contrast that you can ever get, and that is black and white, because when black and white is together, then they represent a contrast for each other. Then the whiteness next to the black help the black to be seen more, and the black next to the white help the white to be seen more. It is the greatest contrast that you can have, the contrast between black and white. And today in the second part of the khutbah, for a few moments, I want to talk about black and white, and I want to tell you why. I close. And I want you to think about the words of the Messenger of Allah, Wallahi, I swear by Allah, it is filled with wisdom. Khaliful mushrikeen. Be opposite of those who associate gods with Allah. Be opposite. Think differently. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Now brothers and sisters, I have some bad news for you. And I have some good news. It is better, I think, to give the bad news first. And then the good news. Everyone here today, I'm sure, have in their heart and their desire to go to Jannah, to go to paradise. This must be foremost in your mind, that when I die, I want to go to Jannah. This is what life is all about, wallahi. Because I don't care what you get in this life, you can become a millionaire. You can get the biggest house. You can have the prettiest wife or the handsomest husband or most children or beautiful car. No matter what you get in this life, it's nothing if you go to hell. So right now, every one of you must say, I want to go to Jannah. I want to go to paradise. When I die, I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with me. 
All of you, I'm sure are saying that. If you're not, you should. That right now, the most important thing is that you die a Muslim. Yes. There's nothing more important than that. I have nine children. Imam Allah is my witness. If my children become doctors, I'll be very happy. Or scientists, I would be very happy. But I don't want them to become doctors and scientists and lose their deen. I'd rather them to sweep the streets of New York City and die as a Muslim than to become doctor and then die as a disbeliever. I swear by Allah. You want to make me happy as the father? Be a Muslim. Just be a Muslim. Wake up every day and thank Allah for giving you life, every breath that you have. Thank Allah for that. Thank Allah for everything that it gave you. Gave you a wife, then you be thankful for that. There's people who don't have a wife. Two blocks from the masjid, there's a homeless shelter. People live there, have no home. You got a home, you're not, you're not a, you don't appreciate your home, it's too small, thank Allah that you got a home. I've seen people in very bad condition. So be a thankful servant that whatever Allah gives you, but, but wallahi, I swear by Allah, if I had nothing, had no money, and homeless, in a homeless shelter, or living in the street, or living in a park, I have everything because I'm Muslim. And if I can die Muslim, then I'm a happy man. And even though I may have nothing in this life, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter as long as I have Islam. And if I have everything in this world and have no Islam, I have nothing. You have to think like that. If you don't, you're foolish. Black and white. First, the bad news. According to the social scientists, there are about six billion people on this earth right now. Six billion people. On Yom al Qiyamah, on the Day of Judgment, Allah will say to our father Adam, alayhi salat wa salam, take out all the people that's going to go to hellfire. Listen, Ismail, take all the people that's going to go to hellfire. Adam will say, how many? How many people will go to hellfire? You want to go to Jannah? Let me tell you your odds. You have to know your odds. What's the chance of me going to Jannah? What's the chance of me going to go to paradise? What's the chance? So Allah told Adam, take all the people to go to hell. How many? Ismail, listen. Min kulli awfin from every 1,000 tis'atun tis'atin wa tis'a wa tis'in. 999 to hell and one to paradise. You didn't hear what I just said. How many people going to hell out of every 1,999 will go to hell? You didn't hear what I said. How many people will go to hell out of every 1,000 999 will go to hell and one will go to paradise. The prophet said that to his companions. You know what they did? They were very sad. Like some of you should be sad right now. So, oh my goodness, one out of a thousand, what's my chances? And the prophet sensed that they felt sad. And then he said this. Wallahi. He said, Wallahi, I swear by Allah in whose hand my life is. Inni arju an takunu nifsa ahli jannah. He said, I hope that you 
my ummah will be half of the people of paradise. Qalu kabarna. They said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. They became very excited. There's some chance now. Now let me give you the good news. Let me give you the good news. That was the bad news. Now let me give you the good news. Man, you're going to be so happy. You may just jump up. Imam, I hope they don't jump up. But what, I, what I'm going to tell, tell them now, they may just jump up. And just jump up and, and just shout. But don't shout. Can't talk. Only I can talk. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كُلُّ أُمَّتِي يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ 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 All of my ummah will go to Jannah. All of my um ummah will go to Paradise. Happy? But there's more. I'm sorry to bust your bubble. Illa men abah. Except those who refuse. My entire ummah will go to Jannah. Except those who refuse. Now, if I ask each one of you, you want to go to Jannah? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Allah, yes. Ask everyone, you want to go to Jannah? You want to go to Jannah? You don't go to Jannah? Nobody would refuse. So when the Prophet said that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was said, Man ya'ba ya Rasulullah, man ya'ba ya Rasulullah, man ya'ba ya Rasulullah, who would refuse? And here it is, this is the key. Qala, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man ata'ani dakhal al-jannah. Whoever obeys me will go to paradise. Wamen aso'ani, faqada abah. And whoever, whoever is disobedient to me, have refused. And then let me tell you what the Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did I finish? When he said that I hope that half of the people of paradise would be from my ummah, or you would be half of the people, he said, let me explain why. And this is what I want to say about black and white, and then we finish. He says, مَا الْمُسْلِمُونَ مِنَ الْكُفَارِ إِلَّا The difference between the Muslims and the non-Muslims. كَشَعْرَةٍ بَيْدُعَى is like a white hair. فِي ثَوْرِ أَسْوَادٍ on a black ox. Like a white hair on a black ox, or a black hair on a white ox. That's it. Now I understand. I understand now. That's it. The believer, compared to a disbeliever, is like a white hair on a black ox or a black hair on a white ox. What does it mean? It means contrast. It means contrast. The next two minutes I want you to listen. I'm finished. So the next two minutes you got to listen or you're going to miss it. You have to listen or you're going to miss it. I was on a bus, man, my car was inoperative, so I had to take a bus, and every once in a while, Allah humbles you. So now, lately, I've been taking buses and trains. Now, I know you don't know what a train is, but in New York City, we have subways. I got on a, I got on a bus the other day, and when I got on the bus, I couldn't help but see, as you get on the bus, right in the middle of the bus was a woman and she was dressed in the latest style. Everything, frills and everything, she was decked out. 
You can't help but see it. You, can, you walk on the bus, you go, you, and there it is, right there, in the middle of the bus. She's right there. And she had the best style. She was decked out. Then I noticed her shoes were off her feet. And she was rubbing her feet. Obvious, obvious pain. She was rubbing her feet because her feet was in pain. And you know why her feet was in pain? Because she wore shoes of style, but no comfort. So she looked good in her own mind, but she didn't feel good because the, what she was wearing was for style and not for comfort. Black and white. Well, what are you saying that for? Imam, it is my opinion. This is my opinion. This is my personal opinion that there is no one on this earth more beautiful than a Muslim woman. There's no one who comes close to that, who is a servant of Allah, who dresses to please Allah. Khaliful mushrikeen, be opposite the people, the, the disbelievers. So when this woman, before she leave the house, like the other woman, she looks in the mirror. But they're looking in the mirror for something different. When the woman in the street look in the mirror, she looking to make sure she has the best style, she looks good, she can attract a man. But this woman, when she look in the mirror, she makes sure she's dressed, she's dressed appropriately. Make sure that Allah is pleased with her. Make sure she's covered. So when she go out in the street, that she covered to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If she does that, she's beautiful. Opposite. And then Imam had hit me, black and white. The more you grow, the more you study, the more Iman you have, the more you become disattracted to some of the things of the dunya. You don't like what you used to do because something happened to you. What happened to you? Something is in my heart now. Something is in my mind. I have Quran in my mind. I have Quran in my heart. I have the love of the Prophet. I have the love of Allah. I have something in me and I'm now different. I feel different. And I warn you, I warn you, those of you who still like the dunya and you don't make a distinction, then Iman is not written in your heart. If you come here and you come here for Juma and say, man, let me get out of here. Help, help give the kutbah so I can go. I can go back to my business. And be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Make a distinction like black and white. Yes. And believe me, the more Iman you have, now you're gonna treat your wife differently. It's different now. You have a different criterion. So brothers and sisters, I close, Khaliful Mushrikeen, be opposite the disbelievers. And alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the great model and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran. Kulu ummati yadakhuluna jannah. All of my ummah will go to paradise. Illa men abai except for those who refuse. Let us not refuse. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us our sins and have mercy upon us and guide us to surat al-mustaqim. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help the Muslims everywhere in every part of the globe where Muslims suffer. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help the Muslims in Palestine. We, have Allah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help the Muslims in Afghanistan who struggle today. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help the Muslims in Bosnia, in Chesnia, and everywhere on the globe where there are Muslims. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help the Muslims in Somalia, help the Muslims in Sudan, help the Muslims in Trinidad and Tobago, help the Muslims in America and Europe, help the Muslims everywhere. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala azwaji Muhammad wa dhuriyati Muhammad wa sallam taslimin kathira Rabbana taqabbal minna innaqa anta samin alim Rabbana la tuakhidna inna sina ata'na Rabbana wa la tahbil alayna israan kama ma tadul adhina min qablina Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqat ala na'bi wafur anna wakfir lana warhamna wa anta maulana fansurna ala al-kamil kafirin 
walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin iqamat salah